Today we are reviewing the smallest and most beginner friendly all-in-one solar power system. This is the PIP2724 by MPP Solar. And this unit is perfect for vans, RVs, and possibly even cabins. And unlike other all-in-one solar power systems, every connection in and out of this box is beginner and safety friendly. Check this out. On the side of this box, there's AC outlet receptacles. So you don't need to wire up your own circuit breaker panel or do any of that wiring you just plug the appliances directly into this and it also has three usb ports for charging your phone or other devices next this does not connect to a battery in the same way that the other models do this one has its own dedicated cable for safety purposes and this is the cable so it has power pole connectors on one side and then these connect directly to your battery next the solar input does not have the traditional terminals like all the other solar power boxes it has MC4 connectors. So all you have to do is use some MC4 extension cables, run it to the roof of your RV or van, and then you can connect solar to this box. But keep in mind that the solar input can only handle 750 watts, and you cannot exceed 60 volts DC which makes it perfect for RVs and vans. But if you have a larger system for like a cabin, this might not work for you. Now this is the AC input if you want to use the AC charger. So this could be shore connection directly to an RV 30 amp cable. And this input has its own dedicated breaker. And what's nice is these terminals are protected and it has a protective cover, which makes it again very beginner friendly. And on this side of the box we have an RS-232 for communication and a USB if you want to connect it to your computer. And that's literally it. That's all the connections that this box has. Also the inverter Inverter output is 2,700 watts, which in my opinion is perfect for RVs and vans. You could run a small air conditioner, you could run um, everything else that you would need in a mobile system. So that's enough talking, let's hook it up to a battery and see what we can do. Now first we need a 24 volt battery, so I'm going to take two 12 volt batteries and put them into series with this cable. And before we connect these batteries, let's test the voltage. So here's the main negative and here's the main positive and we have 26 volts. So now we can connect this cable. First the positive goes on the main red terminal and then tighten that down. Now the negative or the black conductor. And you do not want to switch these. If the red goes on the black, you're going to have a bad day. Now just plug this cable into the box and then press the power button to turn it on. And there we go, it's on. How cool is that? So the first thing I'm going to do is get rid of that beeping noise. So first press and hold down the enter button and go to option number 18 and turn it off. First press enter, then press select, then press enter. And now the beeping should be gone. There we go. I hate that beeping so much. But you'll notice that it says that the battery is powering our AC loads. So that means we have live AC voltage at the output. So first we're gonna plug a heat gun right into the receptacle. Look how small this box is and we're powering this heat gun and we can do another thousand watts. Next, we're gonna test the solar input. So I have a 60 volt power supply, which will mimic a solar panel. We're gonna connect it to this solar input. So first we're gonna give it 50 volts and see what happens. So here's the negative, here's the positive. Oh, there we go, we got a spark. It might take a second because it's tracking the power point. And it shows that it's charging on the screen now. And look at that, how cool, so simple. And this is the maximum output of this power supply. So it's actually working. Now let's test what the lowest voltage this can actually start charging at. So we're gonna start at 25 volts and slowly ramp up the voltage. Oh, right there. So pretty much 41 volts it starts charging at. So 40 to 60 volts is what your solar panel array needs to produce. So you'll probably have to put your panels in series and parallel configurations to hit that perfect voltage. Now we're gonna test the AC input with the grid. The first I have an extension cord that can handle 15 amps. So we have green for ground, black for line, and white for neutral. You'll see on the input we have ground, L for line, and N for neutral. Please shove these in here and then tighten them down. Now when you install this, this could get yanked out and that would create a very dangerous situation. So you need to secure this cable so it doesn't get yanked out. So now we just plugged it in and it shows AC input voltage. And it shows 120 volts and it's not charging the battery yet. It takes a few seconds. 
Uh-oh, so we have a bypass. Oh, so it's powering the AC output with the AC input and we're charging the battery. But you can disable this bypass and change the settings however you please. So please read the manual. There's lots of settings that you can change here. But it's actually working. It's charging up our batteries. We have 15 amps going into the battery at 24 volts. Personally, this is all I need for AC charging, but if you need more, you can increase it if you want. Max output is 25 amps but I think 15 amps is plenty for me. Now let's turn on the heat gun while the AC charger is connected. And it works, how cool is that? Let's see if it's still charging the battery. And it is, uh oh, so we're pulling a lot of current from that plug. I think it can handle it though. How cool is that? It's so beginner friendly. Anybody could set this thing up and it just works. The only downside of this system is setting it up. If you have very specific needs for your system, you're gonna have to read through the manual and change the settings how you wish. But they're very easy to follow. You just hold down the enter button, go down to the setting and change it. But be sure to read the manual. Some people don't and then they run into problems or confusion. But out of the box, it should charge right up with solar and work flawlessly. Now one thing that this does not have for RV and van systems is a DC to DC battery charger. So if you have a 12 volt alternator charging system and you want to charge your solar battery bank, you cannot do it with this box. You're going to have to buy another box or a step up converter. Um, they are common nowadays, so I'll have some links below for those models. Next, another downside is the limited PV input voltage. It is made to be low because it's safe to work with, but if you wanna have a higher voltage so all your panels are in series, you're gonna to have to add your own solar charge controller, which is not very hard at all. You can just connect it to your battery bank at the main terminals with a fuse. Next, this battery cable does not have its own fuse. So if I were you guys, I would connect all your batteries to a distribution bus bar and then use a circuit breaker or a mega fuse to connect this cable to this box for safety reasons. I'm surprised this did not come with it. It would be a lot more convenient if it did. And that's all the downsides that I can think of for this power box system. This is very beginner friendly and game changing in my opinion. This is cheaper than those solar generators and you can use any battery that you wish. If you wanna save a ton of money, you can buy the server rack 24 volt batteries, put them in parallel and then connect it to this box. You'd be up and running in less than an hour and you'd have a seriously powerful system. Please let me know what you think about this box in the comment section below and if you think of any downsides that I did not think of. Also, these are sold through Watts 24-7, which is a distributor for these inverter boxes. So I'll have a link below that's an affiliate link if you want to check these out. Anyways, thank you so much for watching the video and I will talk to you in the next video. Bye.